Hi, I'm Hoyt Elmort Mamou, and I'll be presenting our paper, Design Decision Competence, Supporting User Participation in Design Decisions, which I wrote with my colleagues Heidi Brotten, Suas Govin Yoshi, and Tone Brattetag. In this exploratory paper, we propose the notion of design decision competence to support the planning, understanding, and description of participation in design. The basis for the notion of design decision competence is a perspective on design as decision making, combined with the notion of informed consent in a medical tradition. Design decision competence serves as a tool to describe what participants need in order to truly take part in design decisions, contributing to the discourse on genuine participation. Design decision competence is closely tied to mutual learning and mainly the responsibility of designers. Design decision competence involves developing an understanding of the situation and context which the design result will be a part of, getting the possibility to understand, bring in, and create one's own design ideas, choosing which of the design ideas to try out, engaging in concretizing the ideas by deciding on materials and forms of the design results, developing an understanding of the consequences of design decisions for use and for their design process. In this presentation, I will go through the six elements with some examples from my research projects. The projects are described in more detail in the paper. The first two elements can be described with experiences from a workshop with older adults creating robots in the home. The workshop was held in the Center for Old People, where we recru recruited seven participants for discussing ideas for what a robot could do in their home. In the workshop, we provided familiar materials for simple prototyping such as paper, cardboard, textiles, and boxes, which you can see in the image on the right. The participants prototyped robots while discussing the prototype's role and use with researchers and each other. One of the participants came up with the idea to have an arm on a robot so that it could pick up things from the floor and also reach the upper shelves in the kitchen. Moreover, this robot could wash her back in the shower and stir sauce. One of the others around the table picked up on the idea and suggested to have two arms so that the robot could become a dancing partner. You can see this robot on the image on the left here. In this workshop, we saw that the robot prototypes were grounded in the use context and challenges and opportunities that the participants face in their everyday. The robot workshop enabled the participants to develop their own preferences and ideas based on their context through material exploration. I'll use experiences from another project to describe the next two elements of design decision competence. In this project, we initiated a collaboration with an activity center for older people where visitors from the local community came for socializing and activities. They found joy in social activities and wanted to communicate with family, friends and services in more ways than currently possible. With the participants, we agreed to take on extending their communication capabilities. We explored possibilities during our cooperation using existing technologies and prototypes based on relevant technologies and their preferences and ideas. In the workshop, we discussed various ways to create messages and the participants were interested in speaking, typing and recording messages rather than other methods such as handwriting. I therefore created a prototype that enabled the participants to construct messages in these three manners. The participants dictated the ideas that would be tried out. You can see the prototype in the image on the right here. The prototype used the same interface and was functional enough to provide them with real experiences with the technology. After the participants had used the prototype to explore, we discussed their preferences and ideas. And they decided that voice dictation would be a good direction to pursue. After a few workshops on look and feel, we began 
concretizing a voice dictation prototype. With participants, I drew interface and programmed an app while they directed what elements should be included, their look, when they should appear, in what order, and for how long. The photos on the left show some of these prototyping activities. These activities over time enabled the participants to develop their own preferences and ideas for the design. I will also use the phone project to describe the last two elements of design decision competence. More specifically, one of the earlier prototypes. In this case, I made a smaller prototype that would print messages on paper in large type so that they could see the messages better and in a different way and tear it off and show it somewhere else if they needed, for example, a text message about a doctor's appointment. I made the prototype robust enough so that the older adults could take it home and try it out by themselves over time on their own terms. The duration and experience they could create on their own terms with the prototype and design process gave them an understanding of the design decisions consequences for use. Here on the right we see a picture where participants are using the prototype and receiving a message while having dinner together. It sparked conversation and lasting discussion. The prototypes in this project were robust and independent, as in they were independent of me being present for them to function. The independent prototypes enable the participants to try them out at home and experience the consequences of their design choices. In this paper, we have described the notion of design decision competence and used two participatory design projects to describe the elements and how they may be achieved. We have argued that users need design decision competence to participate in design decisions. We particularly emphasize that enabling participants in developing their own ideas and understanding the consequences of decisions are essential to design decision competence. In other words, participation. To achieve this, understanding the context is necessary and participants need the opportunity and tools to build this understanding. I have used independent prototypes over time to enable participants to build this understanding and plan on working with this further. It will also be interesting to explore how we can assess design decision competence and develop the notion further.